Shalom brothers and sisters, friends and relatives, and to all our online viewers, blessed Sunday and Merry Christmas to all of you. Before we start, let us pray. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, what a good and great and awesome God you are. What a loving and compassionate Father you are. And we are so much blessed that today we are gathered together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Though we cannot gather physically, but we thank you, Father, because you, our God, is an unlimited God. You are not bounded by time and space. You are not bounded by any circumstance. You are not bounded by this COVID and any restrictions, oh God. And we thank you because when we are gathered together, you have said in your word that you are in the midst of us. So we acknowledge your very presence with us this day, oh God, as we ask, oh Lord God, that you hover every household with your holy presence in our hearts, oh God. We thank you so much and we lift up ourselves into your mighty hands. We ask, O oh Lord, that may you open the eyes of our understanding. May you cause us to have an attentive ears and a listening heart so that we may be able to grasp the message today. I bring to you my soul. Hide me behind your cross, O oh God. That you alone be seen and be magnified. Give me utterance, Lord, and anoint my lips, that only your words be uttered and nothing of the flesh. Have your way in us, O Lord. Do what it pleases you in the life of each one. We honor you, we glorify you, we praise you in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God says, Amen and Amen. So two days ago, we just celebrated the first coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, what are we going to do now? We have to be ready for His return. Because He has said in His word, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. So today, i like us to ask ourselves, am I ready for Jesus' return? Let us open our Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 25. And we will be reading starting from verse 1 to 13. So this is a parable of the ten virgins. In this parable tells us the ancient Jewish wedding tradition set up. So in the Jewish ancient wedding, there are three stages which is the first stage is the engagement where the parents of the bride and the parents of the groom agreed together for their children to get married. So we call that an arranged marriage. It's most of the marriages during the uh, ancient times are arranged by the parents and the second stage is the betrothal where the groom and the bride prepared for the actual wedding feast so the groom has to go home to his father's house and likewise the bride has to go home to their place to prepare for this wedding feast and it is the father 
of the groom to decide when will it be. And the third stage will be the actual wedding feast. And during the wedding feast, there is the wedding procession with all the invited people will have their torch, their lamps. It will have a light that will illuminate the way to the groom's house. And uh, this parable also tells us about the marriage supper of the Lamb. You see, in the Bible, it started in marriage, in the Garden of Eden. When God created Adam and he created the woman and this Adam and the woman became one. So though it, uh, there's no word as they got wed, but they became one. So also in the last book of the Bible, which is the Revelation, we see there in uh, chapter 19 verses 6 to 9, it tells us about the marriage supper of the lamb the marriage the wedding feast of the lamb so you can we can go to revelation chapter 19 starting from verse 6 then i heard of what sounded like a great multitude like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder shouting Hallelujah for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. Now, let's go back to our main text in Matthew 25. In verse 1, At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. So it tells us about the ten virgins. And virgins represent here the believers. And in verse 2, it says, Five of them were foolish and five were wise. So among all these ten virgins, it was divided into two groups, which are the foolish and the wise. Likewise, to the believers, they are foolish and they are wise. Just like in the parable of the, the wise and the foolish builder. You remember that in Matthew chapter 7. And there are two uh, kind of people that's mentioned there. The wise and the foolish as well. And there are two foundations. The rock and the sand. Now, what does wise mean? Wise is in contrast to intellectual wisdom or scientific knowledge or natural knowledge or worldly knowledge. But it refers to discernment of the times and a keen perception of what is going on. Means it is being spiritually alert. And one can only have this by the Holy Spirit and by the Word. We can only have this kind of understanding, this discernment by the Holy Spirit and by the Word. And also, the other group describes as foolish. Foolish does not really mean stupid or intellectually impaired, but having no discernment having no keen perception, having no understanding. So, let us continue reading in verse 3 and 4. It says here, The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. 
The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. So what does the lamp mean? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Where can we find that verse? It's in one, Psalm 119 verse 105. So thy word, the word of God, is the lamp unto my, to our feet and the light unto our path. And also it says in Proverbs 6.23. Let's read in Proverbs 6.23. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For this command is a lamp. Whose command? It is the command of God. This word of God. And this teaching is a light, the teaching of God. And correction and instruction are the way to life. So he described the command and the teaching as a lamp and a light. Now back to our main text in Matthew chapter 25. What does the oil represent? It represents the Holy Spirit. Imagine a lamp without oil and a flashlight without batteries. It does not shine. Likewise, the Bible without the Holy Spirit is inadequate. It does nobody any good. So for us to benefit from the Word of God, we must read the Bible and we must have the Holy Spirit to illuminate our mind, to give us understanding of the Word of God. Because so many are reading the Bible even the critics, even the devil knows the word of God, but they don't have the understanding because they do not have that oil, the Holy Spirit. So spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And without the Holy Spirit to illuminate the word, it's like a flashlight without batteries. Now talking about the ten virgins, what's it, what is the difference between the two? The wise and the foolish. We have read in verse 3 and 4 that the foolish one took their lamps but did not take any extra oil with them. But the wise ones took oil in jars along with their lamps. So they have a, a, a reserve oil with them. So the wise has a reserve oil. So you see? Uh, they are, they are uh, defined as wise because they took oil with them in jars. And it is very important for us to have this reserve oil. Imagine a car without oil. Who among you has a car? If you go and check on that dipstick where the oil is and if it is already at the very tip well you better worry because the car is going to break soon if you do not keep it uh, with oil the oil will lubricate every parts of the car that's why it is important that the car has oil we always have to check it otherwise it will damage the car every parts and especially the engine and your car gets break if there is no oil so that is how how dangerous it is it, it is it's, it is deadly it is deadly not to have research so brothers and sisters how much more important it is for us to have a reserve God's spirit. For us to go through along our spiritual journey. Because along the way, there are hurdles, obstacles, which are trials, temptations, testings. And we need the presence of God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So we have to... Keep ourselves filled with the Holy Spirit. 
the jars mentioned here it means it represents our bodies where the Holy Spirit dwells. We are the earthen vessel. We are uh, jars of clay. And uh, in verse 5, it says, The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. The bridegroom. Now, the bridegroom here represents the Lord Jesus Christ. And it says here, was a long time in coming in other version was delayed so while the bridegroom was delayed what happened to the ten virgins take note they all get drowsy and fell asleep all the ten virgins so we see here that even god's people sometimes we get drowsy and fell asleep. We get snooze in critical moments. What is that? That means we, uh, we fall asleep in our spiritual walk, in our daily walk with God, in our service to God. We got drowsy. That means we fall away and we forsake our first love we grow cold in our love to God we become lukewarm so we have to be very careful because we are not uh, exempted let us read in Matthew 24 starting from verse 45 to 51 now, it says here, Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing so when he returns. Truly, I tell you, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, Oh, my master is staying away a long time. And then he begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him. And at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You see what uh, did the servant do in this uh, um, story which the Lord tells us? He thought his master is staying away a long time. So he started to beat his fellow servants and eat drink and be merry so he does his normal thing while his sir his master was away he, he never thought his master will come back soon so he got so carried away and also let us read in exodus chapter 32 exodus 32 verse 1 this tells us when uh, Moses went up to the mountain to meet God. 32 verse 1. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So who said it? It's the people of God, the Israelites. They said Moses was so long in coming down, meaning to say he got delayed. So they started to build a golden calf for them to worship. So take note of this. The gods mentioned here is in a small letter. And they committed idolatry. 
So in the delay of Moses to come down, the Israelites begin to adapt pagan worship. They started to worship the idols. And so by delay, the Lord tests our faith. So during this time, the people of God, the Israelites, they became impatient and restless. And it is a time of testing for them. Now turn your Bible in Matthew 26, verse 40 to 41. 26, 40 to 41. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So even the disciples, they fall asleep when the Lord Jesus went up to the mountain and prayed. So what does it mean then to be spiritually awake? It means that we are to be sober. We are to be vigilant. Now let's uh, turn our Bible in the book of Mark. The Gospel of Mark chapter 13. Let's read verse 35 to 37. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. That is the word of the Lord Jesus. So do not let yourself be left behind. Do not let ourselves be left behind. So when people are sleeping, what happens to their mind? They are not actually, they are actually occupied with what's really going on around them. And sometimes we dream, right? So it means that we get so distracted with the things in this world, right? Like a dream, we are not in touch with reality. What is reality? That the Lord is coming soon. Now let's read in Luke chapter 9, verse 28 to 32. Luke chapter 9, verses 28 to 32. This tells us about the transfiguration. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up unto a mountain to pray. So again, they went up to the mountain to pray. As he was praying, so that is the Lord Jesus, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. Verse 31, they spoke about his departure, the departure of the Lord Jesus, which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. And then verse 32, Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they become fully awake, Oh, here it is. Listen to this. They saw his glory. Whose glory? The glory of the Lord Jesus and the two men standing with him. The glory of Moses and Elijah. So they had this uh, fully awake experience, seeing the glory of the Lord Jesus. Brothers and sisters, what an experience it is. So let us also desire for such an experience to see behold the glory of God when we are fully awake for sure we can experience that and uh, in the book of Isaiah 56 verse 10 
turn to the Old Testament in Isaiah 56 verse 10. God has called us um, watchmen. But in this verse, let us see what uh, the Word of God says. Israel's watchmen are blind. They all lack knowledge. They are all mute dogs. They cannot bark. So in the Word of God, he compared the uh, watchmen of Israel like a mute dog that cannot bark they lie around and dream they love to sleep so what men are supposed to be awake to be alert but these watchmen the israel's watchmen are blind and they are like the muted dogs that cannot bark and they sleep they love sleep so brothers and sisters we are called to watch for others. So how can we watch if we are blind, if we are like those mute dogs that cannot bark? What good is a watchdog when they are sleeping and cannot bark? Right? Just like us. What good are we called to be watchmen if we are not fully awake, fully alert? We are not sober. We are not vigilant. Now, let's read also in Luke chapter 19. Go back to uh, the New Testament. Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Uh, this is uh, about the parable of uh, the parable of the ten minas. It says there. So he called ten of his servants. And gave them ten minutes. So the master called ten of his servants and he gave them ten minutes. And he said to them, put this money to work, he said, until I come back. So meaning to say in the other version, New King James Version, it says there, do business until I come. So what kind of business? What does it mean when he said put this money to work? So it means we got to do, to do the Lord's work till he comes. Let us do the Father's business. What is the Father's business? The will of the Father. Until the Lord Jesus comes. Now, let's go back to our main text in Matthew 25. Verse 5. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fall asleep. So, in other version. New King James Version says, while the bridegroom was delayed. While the bridegroom was delayed, what is happening to the ten? What happened to the ten virgins? They became drowsy and fell asleep. Now, this also tells us that uh, during this time of waiting for the coming, for the return of the Lord. Let us read in 2 Peter chapter 3, starting from... Verse 3, 2 Peter chapter 3, starting from verse 3 to 4. Above all, you must understand that in the last days, now we are now in the last days, press friend. What happened in the last days? Scoffers will come is scoffing and following their own evil desires they will say where is this coming he promised ever since our ancestors died everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation so who do you think would say this where is this coming of course of or of course the believers right so, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. So, while waiting for the Lord's return, people and even believers uh, scoff, following their own evil desires. They have fallen away from the will of God. Now, we... The bride, the bride, 
God's body, the Lord's body, should live in the spirit of expectation and not slumbering. Because we want to be ready when he returns. We want to be found faithful. We want to be found blameless and spotless, having that uh, wearing that fine linen that's mentioned in Revelation chapter 19 that we have read. Right? So let us aim to be ready for the Lord's return. Now let's continue in Matthew 25, verse 6. At midnight, so it says midnight. The cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Midnight here is not literally midnight. Because it could be midnight here, but on the other side of the globe, it's daytime. So what does it mean here is that it is the darkest hour, darkness of the AIDS. When lawlessness abounds. ungodliness amounts look around you what's happening in the world we are in the darkest age the world is getting darker and darker so it says here at midnight in John chapter 9 verse 4 John chapter 9 Verse 4. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. said, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. So night is coming at the darkest hour, at darkest time, darkness of the age, when no one can work. The time is coming when the true believers, the church, can no longer labor for the Lord because the believers will be just waiting and standing in persecution. So, while it is day, let us do the Lord's work while we can. When it says while, while it is day, meaning to say while we can, while we have the chance, while we have the opportunity, let us do the Lord's work till he comes. Amen? Now, in verse 7, Matthew 25, then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. Trim their lamps means uh, they prepared their lamps. They have to put oil and light it up. But what happened? Let's continue reading verse 8. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. So meaning to say, there you go. They didn't... Uh, took no oil with them they took no oil with them no extra oil so their lamps are going out but the wise virgin said they replied no they replied there may not be enough for both us and you instead go to those who sell and buy some for yourselves wow midnight imagine the time do you think there is still a store, a shop that is open who sells the oil at that time? So this means that we are at the last days. At that time, that moment, that moment when the Lord returns, there is no time. There is no time to go and buy oil. There is no time for us to uh, make our hearts right with God. At that time, the Lord returns that, hey, here comes the Lord. Now I'll do, 
I make it right this time. No, there will be no time. This uh, reply sounds selfish because the foolish ones ask for an extra oil. But the wise virgin said, no. Remember, salvation is individual. When they said no, it means that they cannot share that oil. It means you cannot uh, uh, impart your salvation because salvation is individual. We can share the gospel to the unbelievers, to the lost. But what we have, what we have received, we cannot impart it to them. It is not inherited. Okay, Salvation is individual and it is not corporate. Let us read in Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 20. What did it say here? 14, verse 20. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, even if Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they could save neither son nor daughter. They would save only themselves by their righteousness. So they can only save themselves. They cannot save their sons nor daughters, even Noah, Daniel, and Job were there. So you see this verse, it tells us that Salvation is individual. Man, we are not saved by virtue of uh, the preparation of others. We are not saved by virtue of a uh, uh, relationship to others. That even those believers who are baptized with the Holy Spirit can still be destitute. Remember Ananias and Sapphira? They are baptized with the Holy Spirit. But when they sold their uh, possession, but keep part of it, keep back part of it, and so they lied to the Holy Spirit, they died. So even those who are baptized with the Holy Spirit, they can be destitute as well. They can still be destitute. Amen? That is a very grievous sin. When you lie to the Holy Spirit, unpardonable sin, lying to the Holy Spirit. So, brothers and sisters, we must have our own relationship with the Lord. Always remember that salvation is individual. We must obtain that oil, that Holy Spirit by ourselves, personally. And let us uh, keep ourselves filled with the Holy Spirit. Amos 8, chapter 8, verse 11 to 12. Amos, let's go to the Old Testament once again. Amos chapter 8, verse 11 and 12. The days are coming, declares the Sovereign Lord, when I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. And then verse 12, people will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of the Lord, but they will not find it. So you see, there will come a time that we can no longer find the word of God. Then we, when there, there will come a time when we can no longer hear the words of the Lord. And even there is the word of the Lord. If there is no Holy Spirit, we will never be able to understand. So there will come a time that there will be no more. There, we, there, we can no longer hear the word of God. Even we search it, we cannot find it. So while we can still read the Bible, we still have our Bible, the words of God still can be preached, 
we have to grab that opportunity, that chance to listen, to read, to study, meditate the Word of God. It's good to memorize because even if you don't have your Bible, you can still uh, recite the Word of God and meditate on it. So even when they no longer sell the Bible, you can no longer find any Bible around. If you keep it in your mind, then uh, we have something to meditate. Amen? Now, let's continue Matthew 25 verse 9. Here it says, No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. Go to those who sell oil. Who do you think gives the Holy Spirit? In John chapter 14, verse 16 up to 17a. Let's turn our Bible in John chapter 14. Verses 16, verse 16 to 17, 8. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. 17, the Spirit of Truth. So it is the Father who sends the Holy Spirit, who gives the Holy Spirit. So go to the Father and ask for it right but at the time when the lord returns the time of rapture when the lord will come and take us with him the age of grace ends the outpouring of the uh, holy spirit is no longer there so while we still in this age of dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Let us grab this opportunity. Just like the wise, just like the wise virgins who took extra oil with them in the jars, who took who thought ahead, who have that discernment, who have that understanding that in case the uh, coming of the bridegroom delays they have an extra oil for their lamps let us be like the wise virgins unlike the foolish who were caught off guard they were not prepared they were not ready because they have no extra oil now verse 10 in matthew 25 but while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. So they left and they went and buy and find a store where they can buy oil. But then, while they were away, while they were on their way to that store, or if there is a store open, the bridegroom arrived. And the virgins, the five wise virgins, who were re ready went in with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut and the door was shut so the virgins who were ready who has this extra oil prepared for the lamps went to illuminate the way to the groom's house remember in the ancient wedding uh, time the virgins has to have this light to illuminate the way to the groom's house imagine that time midnight they came it's dark and they need light to illuminate the way so us like us brothers and sisters who are called by God we are called to be light the light and the soul of this world in this crooked and perverse generation in this dark world so let our light shine let our light shine what good is it when our light is dim what good is it for a soul if it has lost its saltiness so likewise mga kapatid brothers and sisters 
what good are we when we lost our saltiness and our lights get dimmer and dimmer. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit does not only illuminate the Word of God, but illu it illuminates us. So that's why when you see a believer that's filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, their face get, are so radiant. It reflects from their face, right? So, brothers and sisters, in this parable, the bridegroom identifies the virgins by their light. So, likewise, Jesus identifies us by our light. How, uh, how is our light? Does it get dimmer or, there, or it gets some place? Is it burning? It, it, does it keep burning? We better check ourselves. So, the wedding banquet that's mentioned here in verse 10 is uh, like the wedding feast of the Lamb that's going to happen when the Lord returns and will take His bride, the church, with Him. And up in heaven, there will be a marriage feast of the Lamb. And so, this is the climax of the great plan of salvation. So, you see, in the Bible, the Bible starts with a marriage and ends with a marriage. From Genesis and then to Revelation, it tells us about a marriage. Now, in the wedding, who are we, usually, who are we going to invite? Who are those who usually who are usually invited to the wedding of course the friends and family but uh, how did the Lord Jesus describe his friends and family let's read in John 15 verse 14 turn your Bible to John 15 verse 14 John 15 verse 14 he says here you are my friends if you do what I command. So, only those who does the will of God, who does what the Lord commands, are called his friends. And who is his family? Let's turn our Bible in Matthew chapter 12, verse 50. Matthew 12, verse 50. He says here, pointing to his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Brother, sister, and mother. That's a family. And who are those? Whoever does the will of his Father in heaven. The Father in heaven. So it is those who obeyed the will of God that are considered his friends and his family. Amen? And blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the lambs. We have read that in Revelation chapter 19, right? Verse 9. And then back to our main text in Matthew 25. In the latter part of verse 10. And the door was shut. And the door was shut. Now, the five foolish virgins didn't make it. Because while they're on their way to find oil, to buy oil, the bridegroom came. So it's too late. It is too late. And at that time, there's no store that's open. Imagine at midnight, who do you think will be open at midnight at that time, right? So, these five foolish virgins didn't make it to the wedding feast. They were not left out uh, because there wasn't enough room inside the groom's house, but because they are not ready. They have no oil with them. 
And the Lord said, I do not know you. He doesn't know them. Too late. There's just one marriage. One marriage supper. One marriage feast of the Lamb. It's not two. And there's just one, one bride. The bride for eternity. So meaning to say, we got to get to that wedding fish, feast. Now let's turn your Bible in Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 to 6. Hebrews 6, 4 to 6. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to public disgrace. So it is impossible for those who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. So while we still can, while we have our breath, we have to uh, repent because um, repentance is a gift of the Spirit. And when you hear that voice is speaking to you, you better embrace it. Do not ignore. Do not ignore the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Now, let's read verse 11 and 12 in Matthew 25. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. Who are the others? The five foolish virgins. But he replied, truly i tell you i do not know you remember in matthew 7 21 the lord jesus said not everyone who says to me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of god but he who does the will of my father in heaven so only those who does the will of the father in heaven shall enter into the kingdom of god shall get to the wedding feast because uh, just like the foolish virgin they have uh, lost the fear of god so some christians lost the fear of god they lost their reverence to god and uh, they lost sight of the holy and righteous god they have fallen away they have lost their first love others have been playing with god they do not take it seriously they just took it lightly they live like the world the people in the world the, un the out those who are outside the unbelievers pleasure here and there and so on and so forth they eat drink and be merry now remember this there is a judgment coming in the church first peter 4 17 to 19 go to first peter chapter 4 verse 17 to 19 now here it says for it is time for judgment to begin with god's household so judgment begins in God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? To those unbelievers. And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then, those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good continue to do good right because judgment starts in god's household judgment starts in us in ourselves for god to be a righteous god he cannot bring judgment and those uh unsaved without judging the saved first so he has to judge us first He'll bring judgment on those who have forsaken him, those who have gone astray, those who have fallen away because of their own lust and wickedness and hardness of heart. So God will judge them. So, brothers and sisters, verse 13 of Matthew 25, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Matthew 24, 36 to 44, we got to read in verse 36, but about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. 
as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. And then 44, so you, you and me, also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. This is the word of the Lord. He said, you must be ready. We must be ready. You and me must be ready. So let us prepare ourselves for the return of the Lord. Amen? Let us bow down in prayer. Hallelujah. Indeed, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the warnings that you have given unto us. Through this parable of the ten virgins, help us, O oh God, to be like the wise virgins who has taken an extra oil with them. God, help us to be ready for your return. Help us to persevere, to be persistent, and to continue doing good until you come. Lord, help us that when you come, you will find us faithful. You may find us blameless and spotless. As this is what you desire for your bride. We thank you for the word that we have received today. Seal it, Lord, that it will not be taken away by the enemy. We honor you. We praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope you got your portion.